Hello and welcome to Let's Learn C++ Lesson 1.0. Today the first lesson is going to be basic C++ structure. Now, every programming language has its own structure on how to develop a program. C++ is pretty simple in the way that it works. It's not the, the simplest, but still is pretty simple. You can successfully divide a C++ program into three parts that are more easily understood and pieced together. Now, before I explain these three parts, I need to introduce a few vocabulary words. The first one is a header file. A header file acts as a library file, or like a dictionary. If a function that you need is inside of a header file, you must include that header file into the program. So, pretend you're trying to make a sentence. You do it every day, but in this sentence you're trying to make, there's a word that you want to use, but you don't know what it means. So. You have to go to your shelf, pull a dictionary off the shelf, open it up, find that word, and figure out what it means. So now that you know what that word means, you can use the word in the sentence you're trying to make. So just like we're trying to make a program, if we're trying to make a program and we want to use a certain function that's inside of a header file, we have to go pull that, that header file out and include it into the program. So include our library in that has the function inside of it. So now our program can access that function that's inside of the header file. The second vocabulary word is main function. In C++, there always has to be one and only one main function. This function is the first function that is run, and it acts as a doorway into the program. So you can kind of see how that would make a problem. If the main function is the doorway into the program, if there's no main function, then you have no doorway. You can't get into the program. The program won't run. If you have two main functions, then you have two doorways, but you don't know which doorway is the right one. So you still can't get in the program because you don't know which doorway to go through. So you can see how that would present a problem. The third and final uh, word is preprocessor. Preprocessor is a program that processes input to create output that will be used as input in another program. So and all that's gibberish unless you analyze that. So in normal English, the preprocessor processes code before the compiler actually creates the executable file for the program. So basically, if we tell the preprocessor to do something, it's going to do it before the rest of the program is compiled. So that way it can be used throughout the program. And I'll show you how that's utilized in a minute. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, let me open up a sample application. The Hello World program will do just nicely. So I'm just going to go through this uh, uh, section by section. So according to that structure that I told you about, there are three parts. The first part is the introduction. The second part is the setup. The third part is the use. The introduction is the part where you make sure that all of the header files are included in the program that you're going to be using, and you've declared all the namespaces that you'll be using. This is almost always the shortest part of the program. It's always going to be maybe 20 lines max. One line minimum, but normally it's around four, five, six. Anyway, the second part of the program is a setup. You can see in this program on line six, it's empty. This part of the program is a lot of the times completely empty. It contains all the stuff that will be used off and on throughout the program, such as classes, global variables, unions, enumerators, templates, etc., so on and so forth. You probably don't know what any of that is right now, but just know that it's stuff that's not going to be used right away, maybe, but it'll be used later on in the program and throughout it off and on, and you can create multiple copies of stuff. It's, it's the more complex stuff about object-oriented programming that you just declare right in the setup. So then the third part is the use, or the only thing inside the use section is the main function. So you can see we have the introduction has two lines in it, setup is nothing, use, the only thing inside of it is the main function. So let me go back to the top and go line by line. This first line, pound include less than, iostream greater than. So the hash, the hash sign right here, the little tic-tac-toe board in the beginning, all that means is we're going to use the preprocessor. And after it, we say include. So we're telling the preprocessor to include a header file. So we have pound include, and then we name the header file that we're going to include. 
So we're going to include the IO stream header file. IO stream. It's not IO stream, one word. It's three different words. IO stream. And I and O are short for input output. So we're going to, so we're streaming input and output with this with this library. So you can see that that's pretty much an integral part that we're going to need because you can't have a program without input and output. That's pretty much integral. So then the second line, using namespace STD. Now before you get all grins and giggles about STD, know that STD stands for standard. So we're going to be using the standard namespace. I'll teach you all about namespaces later on. But for now, just know that you need to include the standard namespace. So using namespace STD, semicolon. So the second section of the program setup is empty, so we don't need to go over that. Then this, this third part, use. We have int main parentheses parentheses. So int space main parentheses parentheses. This is one way to make a main function. There are multiple other ways to, to create a main function. This is the, the simplest way. Uh, other ways make the main function have parameters and everything like that. I would suggest for all intents and purposes for learning right now, you stick with this. You stick with the basic way with no parameters. So just exactly like this, int space main empty parentheses, opening and then closing. Just stick with that for now. And then if you need to switch it later on, you can figure out how to switch it on your own because I'm not going to create a tutorial on it. Unless I just get really bored. And then I'll make a tutorial on how to utilize the other versions of the main function. Um, all right, so after that, we have line 10. We have an opening set bracket. And if you look down here on line 14, we have a closing set bracket. So these two correspond to each other. Opening and closing set brackets always correspond one to another. They, they come in pairs. If there's an opening, there's always a second that closes. So basically, all this means is that Everything in between the brackets is part of the main function up here. So we declare the main function, and then we open the main function. We put all this crap inside of it, and then we close the main function with this closing set bracket. So that's all that means. So right here, we have this line inside of here. C out, less than, less than, hello world, less than, less than, end out. And no, this is not count, it's not sout, it's C out. And the second one at the end is end L. So... C out is the basic output command. I'll teach you about that in lesson 1.2 about output in integers. And then uh, hello world is just what we're going to output. So everything in between the quotation marks is what's actually going to be displayed to the user. And then end L is, uh, means end line. So we're going to end the line of output and go to the next one. And I'll show you exactly what that does later on. Uh, Cn.get. It's used for other things, but in this program, for all intents and purposes, all it does is pause the program. That's it. So that way it stays open and you can actually read it. Otherwise, if you took this out, the program would open and then close right away and you wouldn't be able to see the output. And then this last line, return zero. Um, I'll teach you exactly what this means and what it does whenever we learn about functions, but for now, just know, put return zero at the end of your main function every time. Don't forget it, or else you'll get errors. Now, um, I want to go ahead and run this for you. So I'm going to hit this little play button up here on the program. So you can see the output here is hello world. Hello world, exclamation point. And then you can see the, the flashing input cursor down here is on the second line. It would be on the first line up here, but we put end L. So it ended the line and came to the next one, the second line. So now it's waiting for input. We can input whatever the heck we want. Okay, well, I can't show you what the program would do without cn.get because avg is busting a cap on me if I try to take out the line. It says that I have a major virus when I try to run it without cn.get. I don't know why, but anyway. I guess that's another good reason why, why I use cn.get to pause the program. Anyway, that's all I have for you in this lesson. Thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for the next lesson, 1.1 on comments. Thank you for watching.